And I was born and raised down the hills of Oklahoma. I was raised on beans and cornbread and cornbread and beans. And Mama, what are we going to have for dessert? Beans and cornbread. How many of you know what beans and corn? I don't know whether they had them up here or not, but brother, you go down Oklahoma. I said all of that to say this. It is not what you have materially that counts, but it's your spiritual condition with God. It's true. He said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah. When I was a seven-year-old child, everything that I'm telling you this afternoon happened when I was seven years old. I had a very unfortunate accident in my life, and I lost my right eye. I was swinging a piece of baling wire around, and I got it too close to my right eye, and I got it caught. They took me that evening to St. John's Hospital in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Medical science removed my right eye and fitted me with a plastic eye and told me that I would never see again. Between the time that my right eye was removed and the time that God created this miracle in my life was a period of 10 months. 10 months, I was totally blind in my right eye. Now, I'm a firm believer of healing, and I'm a firm believer of miracles, but I believe with all of my heart that the greatest miracle that was ever performed is the miracle of the salvation of a soul. Do you believe that? Praise God. Praise God. I believe it with all of my heart. I had never been a Christian in my life. My mother was a God-fearing woman. My daddy was an atheist. My father didn't even believe in a God, let alone a God of miracles. But my mother was a good Christian, and she loved God, and she believed in the power of God. And she took us to the house of God, but somehow or another, the things of God never took a hold of my life. Seven months after I lost my right eye, and three months before the Lord created this miracle in my life, uh, my mother wanted me to go to a little Bible school in the summertime, a little daily vacation Bible school, and I didn't want to go. Somehow or other, the things of God had never taken a hold in my life. Now, I've heard a lot of people say, well, Brother Corn, why don't people want to go to the house of God? And I've heard a lot of parents ask the question, why don't my children want to go to the house of God? You ever heard of a devil? How many of you ever heard of a devil? Well, we've got a few of you, I don't know. That's what makes people not want to go to the house of God. That's right. Somebody said, look out, you're talking about my children. Look out, nothing. You know it's not God because God don't fight God. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Brother, when you get a born-again experience with God, you'll have a desire for God's house and God's work and what yeah, God's right. doing. I believe that. One man said, I serve God at home. I said, you don't do no such a thing because it's contradictory to God's word. The Bible said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Now, you can amen it or owe me it, but it's the Word of God, and I'm still going to stand on it. Can you say amen? amen? Praise the Lord. God's power is real, neighbor, and there's a lot of difference in children being taken to church and sent to church. Amen. And that's one thing I never was. I never was sent. I was taken. And my mother told me, said, Ron, I want you to go to Bible school. I said, I don't want to go. She said, it'd be good for you. I said, I don't want to go. She said, it'll help you. I said, I'm not going. She said, in that case, you're going to that Bible school, and you're going to take your little brother, and you're going to like it whether you want to like it or not. And she said, for talking to me the way you talked this morning, you're going to get a little hickory oil on top of that. How many of you know what hickory oil is? I don't know where some of you people have been all your life. I'm trying to figure that out. Hickory oil is a form of medicine. It comes in a long stick form, and you just pick it up and warp it on and just as hard as you can now there's a slight sting to it but it'll cure all your ails yes it will and it'll make good boys and girls out of bad boys and girls now how many of you know what i'm talking about well that's what my mother did and my little brother he happened to be handy so she gave him a swat or two and she said now you boys get in there and get ready at bible school and you get there on time get home on time and don't give me no more trouble and i was hard-headed it it, I finally got on the right track. It's all right to be set in your ways if you got them set in God, but, brother, it can cause you a lot of heartache if you don't. And I didn't have mine set in the ways of God. It's just my own set ways, even as a child. I always have been that way. And she, my mother told me that morning, she said, Ron, I'm going to tell you something else, too. She said, I'm not, said, you don't go to that thing, just sit there. said, you listen to what they tell you, and said, you listen to what they teach you and said, I want you to learn something. And she said, if you cut up and carry on that Bible school and you're not good like you ought to be, she said, I'll bring you home and wear you out. Said, you understand me? I said, yes, ma'am, I do understand you. She said, all right, you're going to be good? I said, yes, ma'am, I will be. And I was, if I say so myself, I was a pretty good boy. And 
But, you know, it, it's marvelous to have somebody that cares for you. I've heard p parents say, I love my children, I love my children, I love my children, and they don't know where they're at, and they don't know uh, uh, what they're doing. But, brother, I believe if you love them, you care about people. Amen? Amen? I believe that with all of my heart. Praise God. And there's a lot of people, they make the church house a babysitting agency. Now, I'm not getting the biggest amens this afternoon, but I'm going to go ahead anyway. I said, there's a lot of people, they make the church house a babysitting agency. Well, they'll come on Sunday morning and dump them out at the front doorstep and go back home and take out all the beer and the cards and the cigars and cigarettes, whatever it is, and say, well, we got rid of them for a couple of hours. Come on, amen. And then when they get up old enough to get in trouble, they'll come a ball and squall and say, my God, what have I ever done to deserve my children to get in this kind of trouble? It's what they haven't done that's hurt them. Brother, don't ever ask that question if you've not encouraged your children in the house of God and the word of God and the things of God. Now, you might as well say amen to that because it's the truth. And my mother encouraged us in the things of God. My father, never he never encouraged us, neither did he discourage us. He would just came and went. And that's right. He didn't, the things of God never meant anything to him. Uh, neither did he teach us against the, the power of God. And my mother sent me that Bible school and it lasted for two weeks. The last day of the Bible school, the pastor was there, and he gave an altar call. I can say truthfully, I never in my life heard a preacher give an altar call like that. Brother, he was a Baptist, but he was one of the... He brought me so close to hell I could smell the flame. That's the truth. Brother, there's a lump come up in my throat, and I'd only, you know, I'd only been out of the hospital about seven months, and I was looking for something. And I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there's people that are walking the streets of Muncie, Indiana right now. They're looking for something. That's right. They don't know what they're looking for. But thank God, aren't we glad that we looked and we found. Yes, amen. Praise God. I didn't know what I was looking for. I didn't know what I needed. I'd been quite discouraged over losing my eye, but this preacher started giving out all to call all us children, and somebody said, well, he scared you. Brother, if he did, it was the best scare I ever had. He probably did, too. And I came down in an old-fashioned altar with Christ and raised my hands and asked the Lord to come into my heart and my life. The Lord saved me, and a short time later filled me with the Holy Ghost, and that salvation still holds real today. God. Isn't it marvelous? God can save people so if you'll give him a chance. Praise God. There was a lady came up to me not too long ago, and she had a little baby in her arms, and she said, I want my baby prayed for. And I said, lady, are you a Christian? And I, she said, I want my baby prayed for. I said, are you, do you know the Lord is your personal Savior? She said, listen, I didn't come up here to get no sermon. said, I want my baby healed. I said, well, do you know the Lord is your personal Savior? And she said, listen, said, I don't have to stand up here and go through all this grilling. said, I don't have to have you to pray for my baby. I said, you certainly don't. Won't you go sit down and shut up? And I said, you're full of the devil. There's a lot of people, they want God to keep their family. They want God to deliver them, and they want God to keep them in good health, and they want God to bless them and feed their stomachs and clothe their backs, and they want God to do everything, but they say, give me, give me, give me God, and they don't even want to serve God. That's right. Amen. Now say amen. Amen. They won't even put on, on the whole armor of God. I can prove to you by the word of God that God is not obligated to no one but his own. That's right. Do you believe that? Somebody said, well, I'm an old sinner and I got blessed. Brother, I want you to know anything you ever got from God, unless, if you're not putting on the whole armor of God, it's just the mercies of God. Do you believe that? Amen. That's right. God's certainly not obligated to you unless you're putting on the whole armor of God. But, brother, every promise in that book is yours if you'll reach up and receive it. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. Raise your hands and let's magnify God. She went and sat down and pouted a little while. And she saw God healing people and saving and giving all the call. And she come down there and said, you know, said, I'm not saved. I said, you ain't telling me nothing. I know you're not. She said, I think I need to get saved. I said, I think you do too. <laughs> Brother, God saved her and healed her baby. And she's an example of Christ's saving power today. Praise God. Neighbor, there's no need lying to people. And they knew, there's no need telling that they can live any way they want to live and make heaven their home because you're just going to face God over it. Praise God. 
The only way you can do is clean up and walk the line right. Do you believe that? Yes, sir. That's right. And so the Lord saved my soul and came into my heart and my life. And three months after the Lord saved my soul, the citywide salvation and healing campaign came to our little town and community of Safalpa, Oklahoma. Now, Safalpa is just out about 25 miles from Tulsa. And my mother and father and all of my family live in Safalpa, although I, I live in Tulsa, actually. And there was an area-wide meeting came to our town, and there was a lady evangelist that was holding this meeting, and her name was Sister Daisy Gillock. Now, Sister Gillock and her husband now pastor the Highway Temple Assembly of God Church in Odessa, Texas. They have a very lovely church there, and she told me then, uh, she told me in February of last year, she said, Brother Coyne, I still say that if I would have known that you had a plastic eye, I would have never prayed for you because I'd have never had the faith. But she said, I didn't know it, and God done the work, and we're thankful for it. Isn't that marvelous? Hallelujah. Now, the lady that prayed for me and the lady that was in this revival crusade is the flesh and blood sister to world-known missionary evangelist T.L. Osborne. It's T.L. Osborne's sister that prayed for me when God wrought this miracle in my life. And she was on the meeting at the junior high school of tournament. I'd only been saved three months before that. And one night she preached on faith. Brother, I never heard a person preach on faith like that. And it, it encouraged me and, and blessed me. And I asked my mother, I said, Mother, can I have my throat prayed for? I was having trouble with my tongue. She said, that'll be fine. So I went up there and waited my turn of line. When I came before, she said, what's the matter, son? I said, I want my tonsils prayed for. She said, do you believe the Lord to heal you? I said, yes, ma'am, I do. So she prayed for my tonsils, and I started to walk right around it like I'd seen the rest of them do. But before I could, she grabbed me and said, wait a minute, son, look at me. I stopped and looked at her. She said, what's the matter with your right eye? I did not say I've got a plastic eye. Neither did I say I've got an artificial eye, but I said I'm blind in one eye. She said, do you believe that Jesus can heal you of your blind eye? Well, I was getting a little more than I bargained for in that line, see. And I went up to have my throat prayed for, and, and I, I'd only been saved three months, and this eye business had been a great tragedy in my life, and I didn't want to talk about it no more. But she brought this subject up and said, do you believe the Lord could heal you? Well, I didn't want to talk about it. And you know how you do when you don't want to talk about something. You just try to soft pedal it through and go on. And I said, well, I guess he can. I was just trying to agree with her and get out of that line. And uh, she didn't particularly like my answer, I guess, or something. She began to teach me on how to turn my faith loose in God, and she talked to me there. And the more she talked, the more I believed, and the more I believed. Well, I thought it was getting me off the hook, but, brother, it was just nailing me on real good. <laughs> You know, sometimes things backfire. And I said, I guess it can. She began to teach me on how to turn my faith loose in God, and it built faith in my heart. And after she talked to me a few minutes, she said, Now do you believe a son? I said, Yes, ma'am, I do. Well, my mother had always taught me since I was old enough to understand anything. Uh, she had always taught me, for with God all things are possible. And she never did want me to grow up with the sp atheistic spirit that my father had, you see. But she had always taught me to believe God for all things and never doubt the power of God. Well, I never doubted. And you know, the Bible even speaks of childlike faith. And I had it. I had the faith. I had faith in God. There was not a doubt in my mind. There's not today. But of course, I didn't realize the seriousness of losing an, an eye and of wearing an artificial eye. Had I realized and been older, I might have been a little more carnal in my thinking. But God knows what he's doing. Do you believe that? And she said, uh, after she talked to me, she said, Now do you believe it, son? I said, Yes, ma'am, I do. She said, I want you to raise your hands and close your eyes, and we're going to pray, and after we pray, you're going to see. You believe it? I said, Well, yeah, I believe it. Everybody else told me I'd never see again. She told me I could, so I thought I might as well give it a whirl and see what happened. <laughs> Praise God. You know, that's right. Everybody else tell you you can't and can't and can't and can't, and when she said God could, well, it don't hurt to try, eh, man? Because you're blind anyway, and she... I raised my hands and closed my eyes, and she laid hands on me and prayed, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, devil, you're a liar. I command this blind eye to see. And just a few moments later, I began to see by the, through that old plastic eye by the miracle working power of God. It's just a miracle of God. Now, my mother was standing, standing down there front, 
in the front of the, went along toward the front, and she was going to tell Sister Glock when she got talking about mine, she was going to say, don't pray for him, he's got a plastic eye. She said, don't, and God knocked her out of the power of God, and when she came to, I was a seer. Hallelujah. Now, God knows what he's doing. Woo, glory, I feel the power of God. Praise God, God's real. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. That's right. And, you know, you get your nose in something that's none of your business, and you get in trouble, especially when it comes to God. My mother, I love my mother, but I lay my life on the line for her, but she's just getting in something that wasn't none of her business. That's right, it wasn't none of her concern, and God knew what he was doing, and, uh, you know, God's got a way of just cutting you off. And when she came to I was a sin, so she came up that night and said, Sister Gillard said, you know, that's my boy you played for with that eye. And she said, yeah, said, that's wonderful. And she said, yeah, that's plastic eye. So Sister Gillock called me over there and said, son, you don't have a plastic eye, do you? And I said, yes, ma'am, I do. And she said, you don't see out of it, do you? And I said, yes, ma'am, I do. <laughs> well, <laughs> poor lady, I felt kind of sorry for her, but she, she had the attitude, well, now, Lord, I didn't know he had a plastic eye. You just take it back and it'll be all right, see? But when God does the job, he does it well. Yes. And brother, I knew one thing. I was a seeing through that miracle eye, and she wasn't a taking nothing back, brother. It was the greatest thing I ever had, and I was a hanging on to it, and I'm still a hanging on. Praise God. I am believing God, and the devil can't take it. Praise God. Raise your hands and let's magnify God. Thank you, Lord. Went home that night. My dad, he didn't even go to them kind of meetings. He is pretty, he is a quiet man, still is today. But if you get him, you know, you could get him riled up at the time when things of God, you go talk to him about miracles, things like that, he like it. So I went home that night. My mother shook him and said, Papa, said, wake up. He said, what do you want? Said, we went over to that healing meeting tonight and said, Sister Gillock prayed for Ronald's eye and he's a seeing through that plastic eye. Brother, I want you to know my dad come alive. Said he's a doing what? <laughs> said, well, he's a seeing. Said God worked a miracle in his life. Said he can see through that plastic eye. My dad said, I'm going to tell you one thing. He said, you went to these churches for years and years. And he said, you went around to these healing crusades and all that. And, and you went to church. And he said, I never opened my mouth and I never said nothing. But he said, when you come home and Ronald's a seeing through a plastic eye, he said, you can just find you somewhere else to go and don't go back to those kind of places. He said, because they just deceive you. She said, you don't believe he sees? And you know, there's a lot of people feel like the power of God deceives people, but the power of God is the realest thing that ever was in the world today. Do you believe that? Praise God, that's right. A lot of people are deceived and really don't know what deceit is. And uh, my mother said, you don't believe? And he said, no, I don't believe it. said, how in the world do you expect a person to see where there's no eye to see with? He said, well, I don't know, but said he's a seeing. Said, it's just a miracle, I guess. She said, if you don't believe that he sees, and, you know, Dad was getting a little mad and a little upset. And, and she said, if you don't believe he sees, said, check him and see if he sees. And Bible said, you check him, he's your boy. Now, <laughs> when... When Papa got mad, he'd disown every one of us kids and give them all to Mama. They'd all be Mama's kids. How many of you know what I'm talking about? And then when he calmed down, that'd be our kids again. So he told us, said, you check him. He said, you're my mother said, I checked him. He said, I know that's a miracle. He said, I believe. But said, you're hard-headed. He said, you don't believe nothing. And said, I want you to see it. And she was trying to get him to see and, and be made a believer out of. And she said, I want you to see that it's a miracle of God and it might open your eyes. And he wouldn't even look at it. He said, no. He went over on his job and said, no, said, said they claim my boys are seeing. And it got all in the papers and everything else and all the friends where he worked asked him about it. And he said, I don't know nothing about it. Now, he said, I haven't even seen it. He said, don't ask me. <laughs> but you know, there's a lot of people like that. They don't want to see a miracle so they don't have to make no statement about it. That's right. Well, brother, I want to see what God's done. You let me see something God's done. I'll make a statement and I'll make plenty of them. Hallelujah. And I'm not afraid to. Now say amen. Amen. I'm not afraid of the power of God, nor man, nor fear, nor favor. And my mother told my father that evening, said, I want to tell you, my dad said, now I'm going to tell you something. I don't want to hear no more about it. He said, just drop it and let it go. 
She said, you don't want to hear nothing? She said, no. She said, okay, I won't mention this to you no more, but said, I'll guarantee you one thing. She said, you can't stop me from talking, but I live here too. And brother, she just went around and talking about that miracle and everything, and talked to the neighbors and all, and there wasn't nothing for dad to do but go somewhere, and there wasn't nowhere to go, so he just had to hear it. Four days after God, three days after God created this miracle, the Lord spoke to me as plain and clear as he could ever speak to anyone. God said, son, you preach my word and you carry my miracle and you walk in my footsteps and God said, I'll bless your life. God said, I'll bless you spiritually, I'll bless you physically, and God said, I'll bless you financially. And God said, everything you lay your hand to will be a blessed thing. The last thing he told me, he said, I'll make you a great soul winner for me. That was on the third afternoon that after God wrought this miracle in my life, the very next morning, my father came to me and he said, now, he said, Ronald, I want you, before he went off work, he said, I want you to, to sit down there. And so I sat down. He said, now, you don't see how that I do you. And I said, yes, sir. He said, if I put something over that eye, will you read? I said, yes, sir. He said, you sure? I said, that's right. And he put something over that other eye, and he began to hold up fingers, and he picked up things on the table, knife, cup, fork, spoon, so on and so forth. And when he saw that miracle, he turned around in a little old cane bottom chair there in our living room and raised his hands. He was 53 years old before he ever believed in a God. And said, oh, God, let that same power that made my boy to see save my soul come into my heart and my life. May I feel and may I know the joy of salvation. God saved my father's soul when he was 53 years old. That's been a little over 14 years ago, and that salvation still holds real in his life, too. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, Praise God's real. God. Do you believe that? Yes, Praise God. If a net miracle never done another bit of good, it changed my father's life, and I'm thankful for it. He'd stand for it and lay his life down for what God's done in my life. And I'm glad for what God can do. So we just started carrying this miracle as a testimony of the power of God. We don't fight nobody but the devil. And we just shout the victory and glorify God. We go to all faiths, all churches, auditoriums, tents, and so on and so forth. And we carry this miracle as a testimony of the power of God. How many of you ever had God do something for you? You didn't know how he did, but he just did. Well, that's the way the past 14 years has been. Praise God. Somebody said, well, uh, where are you going to be this time next year? I don't know. Don't ask me. I don't know. But praise God, if I'm alive and well, I'll be shouting the victory somewhere by the help and grace of God. I mean to go all the way. Hallelujah. You see, I'll soon have this August, I'll have 15 years in the ministry. That's right. And I'm only 21. I'll be 22 years old next month. So you see, I've got the biggest part of my life in the ministry. In fact, all of my life has been the ministry except the first seven years. And brother, the only way we can reap the reward for it is to go all the way and, and, and reach, reach heaven and make heaven our home. Do you believe that? Amen. Well, see, I've got an investment. It's the same as buying a home. You could pay every payment but the last payment on your home and lose it. That's right. And ladies and gentlemen, you may serve God for years and years and years, and that salvation will be one of the greatest joys of your life. But what good would it be if you would never go all the way and make heaven your home? Can you say amen? Yeah. Praise God. Raise your hands and let Thank you, Jesus. God, I Lord, praise your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise. And you know, they'll praise God and they'll thank God for what it's done. And other people, they talk about me like I'm a dirty dog, but I just shout to victory and glorify God. And some places we go, they want to pat us on the back and sometimes they want to cut our throats and sometimes they want to pat us on the back and cut our throat at the same time. How many of you ever seen that done? Well, that's a slick little trick that can be done too if you know how to do it. And we just shout the victory and glorify God and thank the Lord for what he has done. Now, if you people see this miracle this afternoon and you see it to be a miracle of God, how many of you will give God the praise for it? Yes, amen. Praise your name. I feel a wonderful spirit of the Lord here this afternoon, and I believe that the Lord wants to do something in this service. I would like to have six people to get any kind of reading material for me to read. I want you to get something like a social security card, identification card, driver's license, songbook, pamphlet, leaflet, or anything like that. I want six of you very quickly to get any kind of reading material for me to read and stand to your feet and come up here. This will be a real blessing and a real inspiration in your life. Come right over here, lady.
Thank you, Jesus. Would you like to just stand right over here? Thank you. Be fine. Now, this is not a side show and this is not on display. But we carry this miracle around the world as a testimony of the power of God and we're thankful for it. Hebrew 13, 8 says, Jesus, Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forever, and I believe it. Habakkuk 1 and 5 says, Behold, ye among the heathen who wonder and regard marvelously, for I'll work a work in your day. God didn't say somebody else's day, but he said in our day, which you will not believe, though it be told you. You believe it? It's God's word, and I believe it. Thank you, Jesus. We carry this miracle all around the world. This afternoon is what we call our missionary miracle service. Um, a year ago, about a year ago, we were in South America. I think it was a year ago, December or January or something like that. We were in South and Central America. There's over 1,600 people there the first night, and I so wore out I couldn't hardly move, and I just talked about five minutes and demonstrated the miracle God wrought in my life, and there's over 700 people responded to that altar call. Amen. Now, I can take you also to some places. Now, you hear what I'm telling you. I can take you to some places in the extreme western Nebraska north and south Dakota, Montana, Wyoming, and out through there that are just as heathen concerning the gospel of Jesus Christ is as any foreign country in the world. Now, I don't mean in their customs of living. They live up to date. But I mean as far as the gospel of Jesus Christ, they're just as heathen as any foreign country in America. I say we need to circle the globe with it. Do you believe that? Thank God. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's right. And I'm fixing to make a sweep up at, in that part of the country. But I want you to know, neighbor, God's so real. Why don't you believe God for a miracle in your life? Why don't you believe God to work a miracle for you? You've seen God do it for others. You know, I always have been positive in my thinking. I never did think I was any better than anybody else, but I never did think anybody else any better than me either. And I always thought I was just as good, and I, I seen God bless people, and I said, God, did you bless them that way? Surely you could bless me some way. I never did especially want God to bless me the same particular way, but I sure did want a blessing. Amen. And I can truthfully say that God blessed my life and laid his hand on my life. Praise God. He'll do it if you're in the center of his will. Do you believe that? Well, I'll guarantee you one thing. You can't bicker and quarrel and argue and fight and cuss and rare all day and all night and expect the blessing of God to be on your life. Now, you might as well say amen because you can't do it. Somebody said, do you do that? I certainly don't. That's why I got the blessing of God on my life. Amen. That's right. You've got to have a settled mind and a settled heart. Have a born-again experience with God, and brother, you'll have joy in your life. Do you believe that? So you get your heart and your mind straightened out with God, you'll never have peace. You'll never have joy, and all you'll ever ha have is hell and more hell on top of that hell. Do you believe that? Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll get your mind and your heart settled and straightened around with God, brother, God will bless you like you've never been blessed. He said to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Do you believe that? I need two men to help me. I want two gentlemen to stand to your feet and help me, if you will. What's your name? I never spoke to you in my life. Is that right? I never planned anything with you as far as coming up here. Is that right? What's your name, Warren? Billy. And you're from America. That's all I'm talking about. Right? God, I don't know how to spoke to you about coming up here. Is that right? Praise God. Now, hell, have you felt a heavy anointment for you? Praise God. He 
was prayed for up in Mary and God spoke something to him. Hallelujah. says Meeks, says Joyce Bennett, 415 East Washington, Muncie, is that right? Praise the Lord, everybody praise God. <laughs> says Raymond Michael, hi guy, 210 Alden uh, Road, Muncie, Indiana, license number H200-730-603. Six five eight. Is that right? Yes. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Says Leo V. Comiskey, DDS, 815 and a half South Main Street, Newcastle, Indiana. Is that right? That's a miracle of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Says directions. If the owner of this card is a is in an accident, wire student number to Lincoln Service. Most recent address will be given. Is that right? It's a miracle. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. 1964, United Automobile Aerospace and Agricultural Implement Workers of America, UAW, George A. Graw, Anderson, Indiana, Betty J. Wobble is the secretary. Is that right? Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Security account number 
Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. That says Social Security Act account number 713-01-5385. Clinton, Eddie, Lee, uh, Newsom. Something like that, is that right? Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Indiana driver's license operator number 8400-00066. Route G Hill, rural route 5 Anderson, Indiana. Is that right? That's a miracle of God. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. Glory to God. Everybody worship and praise the name of Jesus for the miracle power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory, 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 glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Don't be afraid to worship God when you see a miracle. Hallelujah. Praise your hands and worship Him. Thank Him. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, you see what God's done for me? He'll do for you. Do you believe it? Glory, I feel God in this place. How many of you will raise your hand and say, Preacher, I know I've seen a miracle of the Lord. Let me see your hand. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I feel God. God, you know, one of the things you had a fear of the devil tried to worry 